All right, guys, welcome back to Bert's Basics. My name is Peter Bert. I teach at uh, Box Elder High School, and today you guys get to tackle the muscles of the muscular unit of MAP. So, bon appetit. Those are the ones you are responsible for. Now, I'm going to give you one huge advantage. We're going to talk about each one really quick, and what I mean really quick, I mean really quick, because we got to go through a monster list. But here's what you have to do. Remember, know what you have to do. You have to describe the location, okay, and function of the following muscles. I would say that most of your test questions are going to be visual labeling where you need to know where they are. So if you do get a test question and it says tibialis anterior and you already know the tibialis is in the leg and the diagrams of the arm, you can cross out tibialis anterior. So once again, this might seem overbearing and daunting, but don't worry about it. Our goal is we are just going to take each one of these muscles and cross them out one at a time. And then we'll just go through the whole thing. We're going to start at the very top with your head and work all the way down to your bottom. So here you go, okay? Our goal is at the end of this uh, video, you should be able to label all of these muscles. Okay, this is gonna be your quiz at the end, okay? So let's get started. Let's start with our head and work our way down. Okay, so we're gonna start with the head, which we're gonna start with the masseter, okay? Masticar in Spanish is to chew. And you can see this is a huge muscle that connects underneath your zygomatic and zygomatic arch and down to your mandible. This is also gonna be a good review for other things we've learned, okay? This would be the origin, meaning when this muscle contracts, this guy doesn't move that much. This would be the insertion point, meaning this is where most of the movement's going to occur. Okay, so we got my masseter, which is my chewing muscle, and then one of my favorite. Okay, the sternocleidomastoid. Now, if you guys know some midterm, you know sternum, or sterno is your sternum. That word you might not recognize. Clido is clavicle, mastoid. So if I get my camera back up, if you guys remember from skeleton, this is your mastoid. So you got mastoid, sterno, clavicle. So it's my sternum clavicle to mastoid muscle. Okay, and it helps turn your head. Those are the only two you have to learn in your head. Now, in your arm, you got to learn a lot. Okay, one, we got to learn our delta. Okay, triangle, which is my big shoulder muscle. This is a top view, by the way. So your deltoid up here on your shoulder. Okay, your biceps brachii. Remember, brachii does mean arm. Tri is a number, and seps is head. So this is a three-headed muscle in the back of your arm. Biceps, two-headed muscle in the front of your arm. And if you guys remember, we talked about how when you flex your arm, your biceps is going to be your agonist, meaning main mover, prime mover. Okay, and then your triceps will be your ant agonist okay the one who goes against do you remember how we had another word called s called synergist that's what this guy is your brachialis is a synergist for your biceps brachii he helps with the flexion of the arm but he's not number one so he is a synergist instead of a agonist okay then we keep going down the arm and we have my brachial radialis this is my arm radius muscle so whenever you hear radialis you got to get it next to the radium now let's talk about these muscles of your form this picture is okay I like this picture a lot better. In your forearm, you guys have flexors and extensors. So if we kind of look at the camera really quick, okay? Whenever I take my hand and I, whoop, there's my camera. Whoop, there we go. Whenever I do this with my hand, those are my flexor muscles, okay? They're flexing my hand. Whenever I go like that, that's extending my hand. And those are my flexors and extensors. So on any diagram, you're going to have flexors on one side of your forearm, and you're going to have extensors on the other side of your forearm. And once again, these are agonist antagonists of each other. Okay. Okay. Another one, the last two you got to know on the arm. Now these two are going to be hard because you probably haven't heard of them too much unless you've taken CNA. Okay. They're supination and pronation. It's about where I move my hand, whether I can move my hand to the flat or face up. It's a rotate the hand or the forearm in general. So you can see these guys form a sweet X and that's why they help movement. So if you look, they can twist the hand and make it move in different directions. So you can see your supinator on this side is going all the way from the humerus side to the ulna, where my pronator is going from the humeral all the way to the radius, and it basically helps to pivot or to uh, supinate and pronate the hand, okay? So don't worry about these words, uh, supination, pronation. I don't think we need to know those, but these two muscles are on your list, so gotta get them, okay? Now let's talk about rotator cuff, okay? Rotator cuff is an interesting concept. A lot of people have heard this before, but I want you guys to memorize it this way. Rotator cuff is a series of muscles, uh, tendons, and I guess you could argue ligaments that help stabilize the shoulder, help keep the shoulder in its socket, and help move the shoulder to reach for something, comb your hair, or throw a ball. In this class, we're going to go kind of more above and beyond that. We are going to learn four. There are four muscles that really make up the rotator cuff in most books and anatomy, stuff like that. So I want to show you the four. But to get this, you have to know this word right here. On the scapula, on the posterior side, so let me move my head, okay? On the posterior side, this guy right there 
okay you can actually grab him it's this little ridge right here on your scapula okay we call that the spine of the scapula now the only reason why that would help you is because we have a muscle above the spine and we have a muscle below the spine and i think that's going to help you understand what we're doing okay so if we look if i'm above the spine we call it the supraspinatus muscle above spine super spinatus okay now if we go below the spine okay we call that the infra spinatus inferior superior okay below that okay then we have a ter uh, teres muscles you have teres major and teres minor but on your list you only need to know minor there's a teres muscle that also is on the posterior side of the arm to help move it uh, stabilize the arm and kind of give you a backwards motion as well and then underneath the scapula under below the scapula is our fourth muscle which is called my subscapularis so let's go through them again one supraspinatus above the spine two infraspinatus below the spine okay three under the scapula we call him subscapularis and the hardest one for you guys to remember is your teres muscles okay teres minor those make up my rotator cuff so if someone actually hurts their rotator cuff it could be any one of those four muscles or associated ligaments and tendons in that vicinity okay trapezius Okay, trapezius is a huge muscle, okay? On your shoulder, remember, these are your origin insertions. You don't need to know these. I just want to show you how big it is. I mean, the origin is occipital, cervical, thoracic vertebrae, okay? Then it goes around to your uh, scapula. And don't forget, it also goes around to your clavicle. So if you're getting a massage, this red muscle right here is still your trapezius, okay? Uh, pectoralis major, that's your big chest muscle right here. Once again, he's a main mover. Remember, insertions mover. Mover of the arm, pectoralis major. Okay, latissimus dorsi, okay, uh, dorsi is your back, okay, these are commonly called your lats, okay, lats and lats, okay, and these also, crazy enough, insert on your humerus, so these guys come all the way around, insert, insert on the other side, outer, under, underside of your humerus, so this is your traps, huge back muscle, lats, bigger uh, back muscle, more in the lumbar region. Okay, deltoid where I did. Okay, that's your shoulder muscle right here. Okay, I just like Arnold. So there's an Arnold picture for you. Okay, we already did biceps. We already did triceps. Now let's do core muscles. Okay, now even though it might be a good idea to learn all of these, you only need to learn two. Okay, so let's talk about rectus abdominis. So here's my rectus abdominis. Okay, rectus is sorry someone came in uh, rectus is straight uh, so your rectus is your straight abdominal muscles which you guys commonly call your six packs and stuff like that now we have my uh, external obliques now externals on the outside right so these are all my external obliques right here and you can see they're angled but if you have an external you for sure know you're going to have an internal okay so but on your list you only need to know external obliques because these are the ones on the angle on the side okay so those are my other ones so there's your internal obliques and then transverse is abdominus not on your list but you know transverse is going across so if you kind of look at this can i just kind of do something stupid rectus straight transverse across external going downward angle internal going upward angle and that's why they call it your core so working your core man you got to work your core in every way possible because muscles are going in every different direction Okay, diaphragm, diaphragm, which in class I'm always going to pronounce diaphragm, because you can remember the G, is the only one that kind of is weird that doesn't belong. Now, there's a good argument whether he's a skeletal or smooth muscle. We'll talk about that in class. But he's the parachute muscle that is associated with breathing inside of our core between thoracic and abdominal cavities. Okay, let's do legs. Okay, now let's start with our quadriceps now. Quad means four. You know the quadriceps are on the front of your leg, but you have to know their names. This guy is by far the one that's probably going to be me tested the most. RF, rectus femoris. Now, I hope this sentence makes sense. He's the agonist of the group, meaning when the quads perform their function, he's the one who provides the majority of the force. That means the other three are synergists. Now, if you look, this has the word vast in it. Okay, vast means spacious or big. So there's three vast muscles there. And so we got to tell them apart. Well, good thing we know our outside. Outside is L. Inside is M. Okay, medial, lateral. So that's my vastus lateralis, vastus medialis. And then what are we going to call this one in the middle? That's hard to see unless the rectus femoris is removed. Oh, let's call it right in the middle, inter medius so those are your four quadriceps we have my lateral on the outside medial on the inside intermedius in the middle with my rectus femoris on front okay let's do the same thing for hamstrings hamstrings you only have three you only have three so now the biggest mistake uh, mistake most people do is biceps they think of the arm why my biceps brachii remember brachii is arms this is my biceps on my femur 
femur being the large bone in your thigh. So this is my biceps femoris, okay? He tends to be considered your agonist, okay, down here. And the other ones are the muscles around him, and these ones are tough. They're semimembranosus and semi tendinosis. So those are my hamstrings. We'll talk a lot about those in class. Okay. Okay. Let's keep going on our uh, longest muscle in the human body. The longest muscle in the human body has its origin way up here, has an insertion way down here on the tibia, and his name is the sartorius muscle. Sartorius muscle is named the Taylor muscle because I guess in the olden days they used to take a tape measure and whoop, measure the inside inseam of your thigh and that's your Taylor's muscle. These muscles as a collection are called your groin muscles but in this class we're going to call them adductors because they pull the leg back in and the only one you need to know on this list is gracilis and this is your gracilis right here. Okay it's one of the groin muscles on the inside of the thigh. Okay. I told you we're going fast, so you're going to have to watch this video a couple times. Okay, gluteal muscles. Okay, gluteal muscles are your butt muscles. Pretty strong. Okay, obviously, most people know this one. That's your gluteus maximus. But remember, if you're going to have a maximus, you're going to have a minimus, and you tend to have a medius in this case. So the medius is right here on the underside of the iliac crest. So these are the two that are on our list, gluteus medius and gluteus maximus. Okay, lower leg. Okay, my favorite muscle of all the muscles is my calf muscle. Okay, this is your calf muscle right here. It's called the gastrocnemius. Okay, he is my agonist. Okay, he actually goes in and has an origin on the femur way up high. But then you have a backup muscle called the soleus. And the soleus has an origin on, okay, down here, the tib and fib. Okay, so if we're looking at that, then that's that's what we have right there is that's so there's kind of smaller so this would be a synergist and they both attach to the calcaneal bone via the almighty achilles tendon so gastrocnemius big muscle soleus synergist muscle okay to help out along the way okay and the last one for track people this is just for you tibialis anterior uh as the name implies tibia anterior's front shin splints mm, nasty nasty talk about him in class too Whew. Okay, that's all the muscles you have to learn. It's going to take you a while to do them. So do me a favor. Push pause if you need to. Let's do the quiz, and good luck, and I'll see you on the flip side. Here's your quiz. Just label all those muscles for me. Pause it, because I'm going to go to the next one now. Label all those as well. Okay, pause it again, because I'm going to go to the answer key. All right. Thanks, guys. See you later.